What's up guys? It's been a fucking long time uh, since I've been gone. There's some things I gotta do before I get to work on all this. I wanna make a big fucking thank you and shout out to my buddy John Seguspe for doing the old intro song in the older videos. Um, I love the Italian flair. That <laughs> it was fucking awesome. Also, I wanna thank my buddies uh, John, Rob, and Tyler for participating and doing collaboration videos with me and making a mess up on this table, it's been fun. I also want to thank Tyler Bancroft for doing my logo of Sculinary Arts. It's fucking badass. It's my watermark now, mine forever, I love it. Buddy, I also want to thank you for, um, you know, pushing me. You know, they're always doing something better. And um, it's just, it's fucking awesome. I appreciate all the love and support from everybody, so I just wanted to say thank you for that. I wanted to explain <laughs> why all my old videos are no longer on YouTube. Well, we got a better camera now, better quality, we have lighting, uh, just a better way of doing everything about it. And that was like a pilot season, but I just, I know how to like deliver now with everything, like cooking and talking and, you know, just, just being me. I shot at least like 14 videos over this past year um, that I haven't even released yet. There's gonna be some videos of me like constantly like sitting down in a chair because I got another, I got a third ankle surgery um, last summer, so there's some videos of me sitting down. I might look a little different, fatter, skinnier, whatever. But those videos are there. They're fucking awesome. I need to bring them out to you guys, and so they'll be being released over this next past year, along with newer episodes from you know lately. Because I'm getting back in the groove, and I ain't fucking going away. So. Today, tonight, <laughs> we're gonna make Grandpa Joe's stuffed bell peppers. Alright, so first things first, I'm going to cut the tops off the bell peppers. I'm going to rip out the inner parts here. And uh, yeah, this is a recipe from my grandfather. Um, he was a great man. We spent a lot of time together. Um, but the past few years, he's been uh, kind of, you know, he's been bedridden for a year and a half. And he was 89 years old. Um, so yeah, we had to say goodbye to him this past March, and uh, it's been tough, even though, you know, I talk to people about it, and they go, oh, well, how old was he? You know, and I go, oh, he was 89. They go, oh, okay. You know, well, it's not your grandpa, you asshole. You know, I'm, I miss the memories. I miss his voice. I miss his smell. Um, I remember uh, when I was a kid, we used to go to the flea market all the time because he had a, one of his, like, uh, he used to sell a bunch of stuff out there. He had, like, a stand out there. And, He's been doing it for years. Like my my dad and his two brothers, my uncles, they have memories too of going in there and helping them set up shop and stuff. And uh, my dad and you know my my uncles, they had to spend almost every weekend out there and helping them out. And luckily, I got to just go whenever I felt like it. And my grandpa would bribe me with Saturday donuts. And so we'd go and I'd help him like sell things um, out there. We sold like. Um, Batteries, those little finger combs for your hair, uh, just little stuff like that. But his biggest things that he sold out there um, was like those like old like coins and stuff. Like he was all about coins, like in the little like pouches, and uh, he used to like have stuff on a typewriter and type it out and put the little numbers on there. He had like cases and cases of these coins. Biggest thing that he sold out there was uh, like tool belts and stuff, like the leather like pouch tool belts, like for all your stuff and. Um, a lot of people came out and bought them, and they were like expensive. And he would like trade stuff, and he taught me a lot of cool shit. And I just I miss him a lot. He was a great dude. And so yeah, my grandfather was Sicilian, which means I'm Sicilian. Growing up, he cooked a lot of food, and that's one thing I have missed a lot, like over the past five years of him just kind of going downhill. Is that I tried to get him up in this kitchen to cook the masaccioli, the ravioli, and the stuffed bell peppers. This was one thing that he did all the time um, in the oven, and he rocked it. And he just had this way about his sauce. I mean, over the years, I've kind of like, you know, been over his shoulder, kind of like looking to see what he's doing, but it's like, you know, I was a little kid, and um, I was just hung hungry and waiting, and you know, but now, this past couple of years, I've had more of a passion for actually, you know, redoing his creations. Reality kicked in and I was like, 
like he's not going to be around forever like you know and i've tried over the years to try to get that out of him and, and he'd say no i'm taking that to the grave with me and i guess he realized too over the last couple of years that uh he wants me to carry that on and that tradition and, and what he's doing and so i'm gonna do you know the basics of what what he did but i'm also gonna add a sculinary arts twist to it and and some things that i just think this generation you know would kind of you know it, it's just gonna be good all right the tops are cut off so I'm just gonna place these in the ramekins now. It's good to have something to hold the bell peppers in there. And then also like, you can just eat straight out of them after these cool down a little bit. I have one, two, three, four bell peppers here. Um, this recipe though is for eight bell peppers. So I'm just gonna do four. And then after the episode's over, I'm gonna knock out another four. And yeah, so keep in mind this recipe is for eight bell peppers. So we have a pound of ground beef here. We have just regular kosher salt. Black pepper, ground, oregano, and some cayenne for the kick. Yeah, we'll cook it all to about halfway done. Son of a bitch, I forgot the red wine. This is a Merlot, and it's, yeah, they kind of like, holy shit, that's a lot of red wine. Whoa, fuck. <laughs> Gross. Mmm, oh, just kidding. There's another ingredient that I totally forgot. I forgot the fucking fennel. You gotta have fennel when transforming ground beef into Italian sausage. It's super important to have that. I'm gonna take these mushrooms and just start cutting them up. And also the onion and the garlic. Because I'm just gonna throw everything with the ground beef. And cook it all like that. Yeah, so I know this looks like a lot of mushrooms, but um, every time I make mushrooms and cook them on the pan. I go, what the fuck happened to my mushrooms? Because <laughs> they shrink a lot. So now I'm just, I'm going big. There's never enough mushrooms. So last year, I saw these knives. It's a set of, I don't know, a bunch of knives. And it's got like paring knife, bread knife, blah, 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 knives. I've been seeing them like ads, like every fucking week. Like I would see ads like for this set. One day something came in the mail and it was the knife set. Actually, here I got it right here. I'll show you guys. It's Cosmic Knife Set, Chef's Vision. My wife ordered them for me because she knew how much I wanted them. So yeah, you get uh, like four other knives and then this little dude over here. Badass designs. Look, look at this shit. Yeah, go to uh, chefsvision.com and no, I don't know what I'm doing when I'm cutting onions. And there's like this big secret, you know, that you have to know about cutting onions and saving five seconds. But I don't give a shit. I just want to cook it and make it taste good. Uh, uh, okay, I guess I can turn them like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Pile of shit. You know what? I'm doing it my way. Without cutting my fingers out. But yeah. Keep them on the same size as the mushrooms. Blah, blah, blah. You know, maybe I should learn how to properly cut an onion. I think that would be great. Somebody show me. I'm going to start crying because it's getting in my eyes. And they say uh, soak them in cold water and then it, uh, you know, it helps with the... Uh, won't burn your eyes and stuff. So uh, maybe I should have did that too. The garlic. The garlic. My eyes are fucked right now. I can't even see what I'm doing. God, get away from me! Fuck, they do fucking onion. Shit. I'm a sensitive one. Seriously. My eyes are like on fire. You know, I got minced garlic, uh, Christopher Ranch, already in the fridge in a jar. I should have went with that. No, you want fresh garlic. Even though it takes time, and blah, 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 and peeling it and everything. Oh, okay. So I do know how to properly peel garlic. I do know that secret. You take the knife like this, and you put it over the garlic clove, and you go swoosh, and you just, it peels right off, super easy. Um, I'll be honest, I just learned that, like, a couple years ago but man it makes life so much easier kind of lazy too 
when other people tell me like, hey, you know, you should do it like this. And I go, uh-huh, yeah. You know, it's kind of like when uh, someone tells you about a movie that they want you to watch and they go on and on and on about it and you go, mm -hmm, yep, I'll watch it. And you don't end up watching it like five years later. I just watched all of the Harry Potter series. Um, yeah, I'm like 28 years old and uh, I grew up with that, all that. And uh, I literally just got done with Deathly Hallows Part 2, like, yesterday. Holy fuck. Hey, go watch Harry Potter. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, like, go watch Harry Potter. It's, it's incredible. So I got some extra virgin olive oil here. A little bit of that in the pan. Got your big old hunk of meat here. Dump it in there. Don't be shy. Da, 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 da. We're gonna let our meat simmer for a little bit and then we're gonna put in the garlic, the fucking onions, and the mushrooms. Our meat looks pretty good, so we're gonna add everything else right now. So I got all this simmered. Um, it's not fully cooked yet, but like I said earlier, it's important to cook the sausage in a pan on the side before you stuff the peppers with them and then put them into an oven or barbecue. It's just important because sometimes like the meat doesn't cook all the way, but then like the pepper will start like getting like a real good char on it, like it's finished, but then the meat on the inside isn't really cooked all the way. So, I mean, there's different ways you can do it and stuff, and but I just like to do that and be safe with it. So. Also, my grandfather, doesn't really, or he didn't really have like specific measurements for anything. Like I ask him like, oh, like how much of that do you put in there? He goes, I don't know, you just throw it in there. He, he had arthritis in his hands. Like so he'd like have like the, the you know, the salt. <laughs> and he'd be shaking it like this. And I go, is that how much you're supposed to put in there? And he goes, well, hell, I don't know. But he always made it taste good. He always brought the flavor, like no matter what. And even though it looked like he didn't know what the fuck he was doing, he always brought the flavor. And that's what's important here. So I know it looks like I'm flopping around, like, oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Oh, you did that before. Well, sometimes it needs more. I just tried this right now. And definitely taste the wine. Um, it can use a little more salt, but that's where the sauce is gonna incorporate. So. I'm gonna grab some of that red wine. And yeah, no measurements. Just pour some in there. So in this bowl here where I just poured the red wine, I have tomato sauce. And the thing is, with my grandpa's tomato sauce, he had like more of a runnier consistency. I loved it growing up as a kid and I still do, but I like more of like a heartier bite like of a sauce. Like, um, so I just used, uh, can of tomato sauce and um, a little can of the petite diced tomatoes and I just mix that with the tomato sauce to give it more of like a heartier consistency. Go by taste, you know, kind of taste as you go if you can, uh, especially with things like this, you know, like I finished this early, you know, a little bit, so like you can grab a little bit here and there. Got some oregano here, I'm gonna just uh, go like that with it, perfect, perfect. And now here's the thing that I always thought was super weird, but it's part of my grandpa's recipe. Um, he, his sauce has like a sweet consistency to it, as, a, as do like a lot of sauces like that you can buy in the store or like you go to a restaurant. You kind of taste like this hidden sweetness. Um, but his, my grandfather's, he had like a lot more of a sweetness and I didn't know what that was all about, you know, and, um, but yeah, it's just sugar. And about that much of it, I don't know. So yeah. All right, sauce is in the pot. Let's get it hot. Sauce is done. Meat and all that is simmered. So we are going to take this. This is garlic infused, um, what do you call it? Olive oil. I'm gonna take a little paintbrush, just dip it in right there. And we are gonna paint around the edges of the pepper. I do this because it solidifies the flavor with the pepper and I love the garlic in there. Um, but also it just kind of softens the pepper a lot easier and gives it a more 
you know, you can break it apart easier, you know, after it's done being cooked, and it's just a, just an all-around better thing to do, so I've been doing it. Okay, we're gonna start off with sauce as the bottom base. Do that, dump it on in. Oh yeah, this is looking good. It smells heavenly in here right now. I'm gonna do layers of, you know, sauce, meat, cheese, repeat. So that way when you dig your fork into them, you get a nice, balanced layers of goodies. Mozzarella cheese, another layer over the sauce there. Oh, this is looking good. And we're gonna do some meats. I don't have a tool for this. This is gonna be awesome. Thank you, Grandpa. I miss you. I already know that he was so proud of me carrying on this tradition and how far I've come with everything. Just taking interest in all that shit, you know? It's important. It's nice. That's what she could have been, you know, physically here to see it. I'm gonna do some more cheese on the top here. Lots of cheese to finish it off. Yeah! Woo hoo! Fuck okay. yeah. Okay. You know what? A little bit more meat on the top. Little meat hats. Right, just another dollop of sauce for each one. Sorry, Grandpa, but I didn't plan for this. I thought I had enough mozzarella cheese. I do not. So I'm gonna mix the rest of my mozzarella cheese with some sharp cheddar. Cause yeah, this can use some more cheese on the top here. So my barbecue also works like an oven. Um, I got it set to 375. Um, so if you don't have a special Traeger wood-fired grill like I do, uh, put it in the oven for 375. But uh, everything's done. It's been on for about 40 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes on 375. They are ready to go. So which one should I do? Should I do yellow, red, orange, green? I'm gonna do green, fuck off. Look at this cheese up in here. Just cut up into it. Oh, it's just oozing everywhere, this is great. Oh man, look at this. Come on, boy. I like to just go with a fork at it. Guys, look at this. Guys, where you at? Where you at? Oh, yeah. All right, let's give it a shot. Yep. Seriously, super close. So nostalgic. Oh, thank you, Grandpa. Mm. The sauce is incredible. I can definitely taste that hint of sweetness with the sugar in it. The cheese is cheesy, as it should be. Um, mushrooms just melt in your mouth. Mm. The peppers are so smooth and tender. Just the way I want them. You guys gotta do it.